Story one. I was just a young intern at a prestigious hospital. My name is Amanda, and I was always the curious type, often sticking my nose where it didn't belong. One day, I overheard hushed conversations among the nurses and mysterious whispers in the hallways. Something strange was happening, and I knew I had to find out what it was. Late one night, I decided to follow the renowned surgeon, Dr. Raymond, who was known for his groundbreaking skills. He was obsessed with a new, revolutionary surgery and spent endless hours in his lab working on it. Little did I know that this surgery came with a terrifying twist. This surgery was supposed to be groundbreaking, but there was a terrible catch. People who underwent it started to act weird and crave human flesh. It sounds like a horror movie, but it was happening right there in our hospital. As I followed Dr. Raymond to his lab, I couldn't believe what I saw. Cages filled with patients who had undergone this surgery. Their eyes had that vacant, lifeless look, and their skin was pale. I was horrified, but I knew I had to do something. I couldn't just let this continue, so I delved deeper into Dr. Raymond's research. What I discovered was even more frightening. He planned to use this surgery on a massive scale, turning the entire hospital into a breeding ground for these zombies. Terrified and desperate to stop the madness, I tried to alert the hospital administration, but they brushed me off. Dr. Raymond was too influential, and he had everyone under his control. So, I decided to take matters into my own hands. I found a few brave nurses and orderlies who believed me, and together, we started planning to stop this horrifying nightmare. We had to find a way to reverse the effects of the surgery. One night, we broke into Dr. Raymond's lab while he was busy with his sinister experiments and stole his research notes. Time was running out, as more patients were being turned into these flesh-craving monsters. We worked tirelessly, poring over the notes. Finally, we discovered a potential antidote, but we needed to test it on one of the afflicted patients. It was a risky move, but we had no other option. With trembling hands, we injected the antidote into one of the zombies. At first, nothing happened, and we feared we had failed. But then, slowly, the patient's vacant eyes began to regain some life, and the hunger for human flesh began to fade. We had found a way to reverse the procedure, but there was no time to lose. Dr. Raymond had caught on to our plan and was hunting us down. The hospital had become a labyrinth of danger and terror. In a final showdown, I confronted Dr. Raymond. He had become a monster himself, consumed by his obsession with his insane experiment. We fought in his lab, surrounded by cages of the afflicted patients. In a desperate struggle, we managed to inject him with the antidote. Dr. Raymond writhed in agony as his monstrous hunger began to subside. He collapsed to the floor, defeated. With Dr. Raymond no longer a threat, we worked day and night, administering the antidote to the afflicted patients. Slowly but surely, the hospital returned to normal, and the nightmare began to fade. But the memory of those horrifying days will stay with me forever. I had saved the hospital from a gruesome fate, but the scars of that experience will never fully heal. It's a story I'll tell for the rest of my life. A tale of terror, courage, and the fight against the darkness that can hide in the most unexpected places. Story 2 I used to work at this old mental hospital on the outskirts of town. It was a gloomy place with long hallways and creaky floors. Most of the patients there had visible mental health issues, but there was one guy who seemed completely normal. His name was Mr. Wilson, and he had this piercing stare that gave me the creeps. At first, I didn't pay much attention to Mr. Wilson. He came in like any other patient, admitted for some mysterious mental condition. But as the days went by, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off about him. He always had this stern look on his face, like he knew something I didn't. One night, I was going through the old patient records, and I stumbled upon Mr. Wilson's file. The notes in the file mentioned that he was the father of a patient who had died in our hospital. 
Reason of his death was stated clearly as cancer with all the reports and evidences, but Mr. Wilson believed I was somehow responsible. I had no recollection of ever meeting Mr. Wilson or his son, and I couldn't figure out how I could be connected to his son's death. But as the days passed, Mr. Wilson's fixation on me grew stronger. He would follow me around the hospital, always lurking in the shadows, and that stern look never left his face. One night, as I was walking down a dimly lit corridor, I felt a sudden chill run down my spine. I turned to see Mr. Wilson standing there, his eyes locked onto mine. He whispered, You took my son away from me, and now I'll take everything away from you. The words sent shivers down my spine, and I realized I was in real danger. I tried to alert the hospital staff and my superiors, but no one took me seriously. They all thought I was paranoid and that Mr. Wilson was harmless. It seemed like he had everyone wrapped around his finger, and I was alone in my terror. As the days turned into weeks, Mr. Wilson's torment escalated. He started leaving disturbing messages in my locker, warning me that he was getting closer. I couldn't sleep, and my nerves were frayed. I knew I had to find a way to prove his true intentions to the staff before it was too late. I had to find some way to protect myself. But I was running out of time. Mr. Wilson's threats grew more sinister, and I could feel his presence closing in on me. One night, as I was trying to gather my courage and find a way to confront Mr. Wilson, I heard his voice whispering my name from the shadows. I'm here to collect what's rightfully mine, he said. I turned to face him and that sinister grin had turned into a malevolent sneer. I begged for forgiveness, explaining that I didn't have any connection to his son's death. But Mr. Wilson's eyes were filled with rage and he lunged at me. The last thing I remember before losing consciousness was his hands around my throat. I woke up in a hospital bed, surrounded by concerned faces. They told me that Mr. Wilson had been subdued and taken away, and that I had narrowly escaped with my life. But the terror of that night would never leave me. Mr. Wilson's revenge had been carried out, and my life was forever changed. I had learned a haunting lesson could lurk even in the most unexpected places. The memory of that sinister grin and the chilling whispers still haunts me to this day. Story 3 My name's Andy. When I was a kid, I had a serious health problem. The doctors had tried everything, but nothing seemed to work. Then we heard about this hospital an old creepy place on the outskirts of town. They said it was haunted, but desperate times call for desperate measures, right? My parents, bless their hearts, were willing to try anything to save me. So we packed our bags and headed to that eerie hospital. Dr. Evelyn, the head physician, was this mysterious lady. She said she had groundbreaking treatments tucked away in the hospital's abandoned asylum wing. It sounded like our last hope, so I agreed. I was wheeled into that abandoned asylum wing, and that's where things started getting weird. The place was like something out of a horror movie. Rusty beds, broken windows, and a chilling silence that seemed to seep into your bones. Dr. Evelyn, in her long white coat and piercing eyes, led me to a dimly lit room. She assured me her treatments were going to save me, but something about her gave me the creeps. She started hooking me up to all As the sorts treatments of machines, began, and that's when it began. I started to see things, terrifying things. At first, I thought it was the medication, but it couldn't explain the twisted faces I saw in the shadows. Faces of people who looked lost. They would appear out of nowhere broken, and just stare angry, their eyes filled with torment. One night, when I was alone in my room, one of them finally spoke to me. It was a man, disheveled and scarred. He whispered, run, Andy, before it's too late. Dr. Evelyn is not here to save you. She's the one who did this to us. I was terrified, but I knew I had to find out what was going on. In the dead of night, I sneaked out of my room and started exploring the asylum wing. It was like stepping into a nightmare. 
I saw flashes of cruel treatments, experiments, and inhumane practices carried out by Dr. Evelyn the more I the asylum's former the clearer patients. it became that Dr. Evelyn was not trying to save me. She was using me as part of her sinister experiments, just like she did with the others. The malevolent spirits were the tormented souls of those who had suffered at her hands. I had to confront Dr. Evelyn and escape this nightmarish place. It wasn't going to be easy, but with the help of the spirits One who were once her night, victims, I confronted we Dr. Evelyn plan. and the truth unfolded. She was a mad scientist trying to unlock the secrets of life and death. She didn't care about me or any other patient. She cared only about her twisted experiments. With the spirit's help, we overpowered her, and I managed to escape that sinister place, leaving Dr. Evelyn behind. It was a narrow escape, but I got my life back, and the haunted asylum was finally left behind in the rearview mirror. Now, I'm living a normal life, haunted by the memories of that creepy hospital. I often think about the spirits and the darkness that consumed Dr. Evelyn. It's a story I'll never forget, and a reminder that not all hope is worth chasing when it leads down a path of horror and despair. Subscribe for more videos.